Let's recap um, the example we did in class. And so uh, the idea is I want to make a, um, a remote control for a car, essentially. And so I'm going to use a touch sensor to decide, uh, and this will be touch sensor on port 1, I guess I should say. Uh, touch sensor on port 1 to control uh, motor A, and basically using a, a case structure. So if the touch sensor is pressed, it puts out a true. If it's, if it's not pressed, it puts out a false. So if it's not pressed, I come in here and I stop motor A, and if it is pressed because it's true, it turns on motor A forward. Uh, so that basically allows me to use a touch sensor to turn the motor on and off. I haven't put the power levels, things like that in, but you can adjust that. Um, the reason why I put port A on the outside is because if I left it on the inside like, like we normally would do uh, of this case structure, I'd have to change it in two places. Let's say I want to redesign my robot and I want to change it from port A to port B. I only have to change it one place and change this for both these cases. That's the only reason I did it. Otherwise, you might forget to change it in two places. Um, so putting it on the outside of this, this case structure is kind of nice. Uh, okay, so that's uh, control one motor. And I'll give you an example of uh, how do you control uh, a different motor um, using, uh, you could use another touch sensor, for example, or I could use uh, an NXT button. So I'm just copying and pasting this exact same thing. Uh, and rather than port A now, I can do port B, because now I have uh, motors A and motor B. And if I had two touch sensors, uh, I could do, for example, this would be a two touch sensor robot. And so if I pressed, um, if neither button was pressed, that means they're both false. That means both uh, motors A and B would be stopped. Uh, if I press um, port 1's touch sensor, then the motor, will, motor A will turn on and turn one way, turn left or right, depending on how I've got my robot built. And if I press um, the uh, both touch sensors, both motors will turn on and it'll go straight. And so I can make a two touch sensor uh, robot. Now, of course, uh, for the minefield project, you can do this over Bluetooth just as easily by setting the um, whether or not the touch sensor is pressed, you can send a 0 or 1, essentially, uh, to the other NXT and do the exact same thing on the other side, but rather than reading a sensor, you'd be reading a mailbox. You could do the exact same thing. Um, but just to give you some ideas of what you can do, I can go in here and also I can say, well, I want to use NXT buttons. And so I can say NXT buttons, I'll create a constant here, and now I don't have a port, so I'll get rid of that. And control B gets rid of white bad wires. Um, and I can use, for example, the left right button uh, to control. And so this is the case where port 1 would control motor A, and the left button would control motor B. Um, the one thing we wanted to I wanted to point out was that you cannot press two NXT buttons at the same time. So as, as much as you'd like to be able to use just the buttons on the front of the NXT to control um, to control the NXT, uh, you can can only press one button at a time. Exclamation marks. Uh, so you can't do this two button uh, driving system with just the front buttons on the NXT because they can only read one button at once. Uh, so it's either the left or right or the enter button. You can't read them all at the same time. So you can't do two things at once. Um, so that's an example of a case structure nested inside of a loop as an example. And so this is really a nested structure because it's a case structure inside of a loop.